it's Fat Stormtrooper here from Daft Ticket Gaming. Um, uh, I've had quite a lot of interest in people uh, wanting to learn more about the TF2 economy. And like any economy, it's, in incredibly, um, uh, it's incredibly complex. There's a balance of supply and demand. Um, and there's the additional complexity that uh, is introduced by the fact that... Um, uh, that uh, you you have a a, a con like a controlling interest. Um, so basically, there's a barter system that's occupying um, sort of like we were talking about before in the other video. You're more of a traditional economy with a barter system. I want that hat. You trade me that hat. Um, there's a separate currency system with keys, and then there's a interaction with the cash system either by PayPal or cards or where you can buy steam uh, steam uh, money um, and so basically you've got a, a situation where uh, uh, you have got a very complex economy indeed with more than one currency now in the past most other economies are quite simple but with the evolve uh, evolution of the non-cash system and credits and um, there are barter card systems in, in even in the Australian and American economies and more recently the emergence of multiple cryptocurrencies. Uh, some of the uh, developing nations also have an economy, like for example in Vietnam you have economy of Dong, which is the currency there and it's the local people accept that. And there's also the US dollar, uh, which is also accepted widely through, uh, and some people greatly prefer that because it has a greater store of value than the dong. So this is probably the most significant piece of literature uh, by Bormer, uh, Kephart, and Kephart from the University of California, Santa Cruz in 2015. It basically details the uh the the complexity of the tf2 economy <coughs> so um basically uh, it's <coughs> there's a like um the the model that i described before where uh there are a, a number of very uh, a small number of very active individuals which are called high worth individuals and they would refer to sort of got uh, high collectors high traders and people like uh, you know Gill and the other people that run Outpost, uh, TF Warehouse, the bigger sort of uh, corporate, uh, or, or corporate or, or small company entities that trade. And if you actually look at the uh, one of the earlier videos I did that looked about, uh, looked at the entire economy that was modelled. One of the uh, the groups in Europe modelled an economy, and they basically found that 80% of the cash flow from from all economic activity on earth is actually generated from about 70 or 70 i think it was 73 or something at companies so 70 odd companies can count for 90 percent of the gross uh domestic product and of those 73 companies almost everything is, is involved is spinning off from those 73 uh, megacorps and the same as the same can be said with tf2 you've got this this core of people um, that uh, that trade, that buy, that um, that keep things uh, keep uh, money flowing into the economy, and you've got also this uh, this group of uh, people that are not so interested, and there's a larger number of them. Okay, so there's so-called free-to-play players and players that don't really trade much. They're more just sort of a very. They might be. There might be young people that don't have a lot of uh, assets, um, but they are that their their the small amount of activity, you know, is additive with fuel, you know, the larger catchment of some of these uh, larger traders and uh, so on. Now, the what the central pivotal, the most powerful player in TF2 is obviously is obviously Steam and Valve. Now, because they have a a hold over the basic currency. The basic currency is now keys. That is for the wider trading community. You can buy items to the community market. Um, that that then converts those, um, the gives cash to those 
people who own those items and then they're passed on. So there's also a sub um, <laughs> a significant cash economy. But the people that act, the actual key currency is actually then by Valve actually uh, issues keys at two dollars forty nine. People acquire them. They end up circulating around. And if you actually look, um, th there's sort of a million keys around at any one time. And so there's a lot of value there. Um, now, in the past, refined metal, which is, can be used as a, a fraction of the keys, lost like dollars and cents, that has lost value over time because the key has become the primary source of value, although there are smaller items where you do need ref to pay for them. Now, the next thing is the question of you know, previous currencies like bills, hats and, and buds. They're, they're, they're simply, you know, buds were, port, were bought out for a period of time and they became a dead currency because there were not more of them being introduced. And that's the advantage keys have, there's more of them being introduced. Another bigger, like a bigger denomination note is the golden frying pan, which has been come to be accepted by convention to be 1100 keys. So there are not that many of them, so they're, they're a bit like the gold reserve. Um, and you can, you can sort of buy this inverted commas gold, which is literally golden fry pan, and use that as a store of value especially with the larger trades and because if they didn't people didn't do that at the, with the limited backpack sides um, basically you couldn't trade for some of the high tier items safely um, these items are the in TF2 I mean, unless someone comes along and deletes them which people do delete them and you've had a couple of wackos de deleting a golden frying pan or whatever they don't wear out okay they they have a stable server and they continue to hold their, their um, <coughs> um, hold their appeal to certain facets of the community. The thing that may wear out with time is actually whether or not the game is played and whether or not the demand for those items uh, is ongoing. But there is a, a newer generation of people coming up. There's the older generation that are persisting. So um, basically there are a lot of individuals like myself and like chicken that we have our own our own uh, um, economic existence in the real world and we also have our, uh, our economic existence in the virtual world so basically uh, you know it, it's this it's separate from the other economy and I mean, there must be some people that just try that put all their assets into team fortress but obviously they probably are in a position where they're relatively younger, they have people that could look after them at home and they, they might be students or whatever. But that's certainly not the case for the majority of people. Um, okay, what what is, uh, I guess, what we try to do is find out how big the uh, market. Now, th th this article was really landmark. It looked at the, the growth per capita, it, um, it looked at the um, macro level shocks like you know, uh, inflation, um, depression and boom um, and uh, recessions and also micro level shocks uh, where there's like an update may make some certain new desirables in demand and others are less desirable. Um, basically, uh, this is the number of Team for, uh, uh, Fortress players on a day. Um, you can, we, we'll go and have a look at other, uh, other statistics of that. But uh, around about per day, it's about a 50,000 mark. It has been up to a hundred and something thousand, but, uh, but it has less. Um, the other thing too is, uh, early on, there weren't tradable articles, uh, items. You got some random drops and then um, the barter system was introduced in 2010. And then you had store items at the same time. And that's when the economy started. Now, by 2013, there were uh, 2.1 2 million users at some space pay TF2 at one time. Look, 100,000 people at any one time there was a free to play element so basically people could come in to the game and only and only um and, and not have much money either so you had you had a group of people who weren't very financial in tf2 
then you ended up having a situation where people could get more in their backpack and then more items and, and so the demand goes up and recently Valve has introduced another backpack expansion which is very smart because people can buy more and they've expanded the the value that you they can, you can buy off on the student community market and that allows them to get to, I guess a 10% commission um, uh, uh, for a PayPal transaction for these uh, types of items or a credit card transaction um, basically uh, if you actually look at the number of trades conducted by individual accounts, there's obviously this skewed population. So there's some uh, individual accounts that do a hell of a lot more, but the majority of accounts are actually up here and they don't do many trades. Um, basically, uh, TF2 continues to have quite high number of trades. This is... Um, uh, this is despite you know, the, 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 the so-called fall off of the number of players. This talks about the, the metals, keys, bill hats and earbuds. Bills, hats and earbuds have largely become defunct. The golden pan I would add in here now and keys. But, and there's also the importance of the cash economy. You know, buying things for um, in PayPal, especially by, either by a trust system, which is, is liable for scamming, or more recently, the expanded team community market. Um, the other value, uh, the other thing that's very important is the uh, is is the fact that uh, um, uh, we are getting to a we have a situation where people have formed corporate tr traders like uh, uh, Gil with uh, Scrap and and Marketplace and uh, um, and, and Backpack. Uh, Outpost, uh, TF Warehouse, uh, Opskins, etc. Um, this estimates the, pri the prices for the the, da uh, the uh, barter data. So basically, they looked, they were looking at money goods, key goods, etc., and they tried to sort of come up with an overall figure. They explained, um, they extrapolated this to a very complex uh, formula, which really is just shows the change of one parameter over the change of the other with time. Um, so basically there were 700,000 metal for key exchanges, um, uh, there was uh, some earbud exchanges, and this is the older economy. So there are quite a lot of uh, uh, trades being done in the year. Um, they've actually went through and they've modelled different things. For example, the Mexican hat here. They've modelled um, the medium price, the days of trade, the number of turnovers, etc. Um, I, I guess the there's also this question of what is the total aggregate items held in in uh, stock by players. Um, they've actually done a, a a summation of this and they've basically been able to estimate this. So this is probably a, a high-level economics um, uh, paper, which uh, I found very interesting reading. Um, I, I think it's probably beyond most people. Um, it's uh, it, it's certainly very interesting, and in, in, in that you can read about how how people approach the analysis of the economy. So what I'm going to do now is try and go through and see what other uh, what other sort of uh, publications and evidence are around. Uh, but this is the landmark paper. This paper has the most information um, with uh, uh, regarding TF2 and the most in-depth analysis of it. And if you are uh, wanting to learn seriously about the economy of TF2, it is a paper that I would recommend um, that uh, you read. Okay, this is another paper that... Uh, so this is another... Uh, a piece of evidence that has come up on a backpack community forum and basically this has got a one of the chaps saying I was looking at the top back and I, and I, I, I thought Gil would be the richest well you know who knows he might be but at the end of the day he's gone through and he's estimated the number of refined metal and various things tied to Gil and it's quite impressive that there's so much now obviously Gil may be holding this for other traders, or he might be selling things on commission. Um, yeah, and that's 
you know, that's been pointed out subsequently. But even so, I mean, the the estimate that he he estimates really um, is that the grand total of uh, in in Giel's, um, uh, organization is probably twenty one thousand keys or um, or about four hundred and fifty thousand, so half a million dollars just of what he has estimated. Now, obviously. This does not take into account of the fact there are a lot of those traders are putting only a percentage of what's in their backpack into these things. So, I mean, obviously, if, if there's half a million dollars that somebody could conservatively estimate here, it's, it is, uh, the, the economy is quite impressive. So, I mean, this is one guy's organization. How much is in Opskin's bots? How much is in, you know, going through the outpost system? So the answer is, I mean, just say, well, Opskins and the other guys are at least the same. That's $1 million of items. And these items, these are generally items that are um, being turned over. So he advertised, turned over and sold. So I would say over a 12-month period, we would have to assume that the majority of these items are turned over. So that's in effect, um, you know, that's a, yeah, and, and this is only at one snapshot in time. I, I do not know the exact sale records, but even if it was only turned over once, which I think would be highly unusual, I would say two or three times, that would probably make it once would be half a million dollars in sales per year, which and then three times would be about one and a half million dollars of sales per year, um, at least. And if it was even it was five times, or maybe ten times, I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, you could see that that could be millions of dollars of turnover, of which a percentage is then going off to a marketplace or whatever. So. That's ten percent now. Obviously, if that went to Gill or other sellers, then that ten percent then can be either reinvested with keys or used for other purposes out TF2. So the answer is there's still a healthy turnover in the economy, and these estimates were made in August of 2017. Okay, this is another thing that I'll, I'm going to come to now to look at the Steve. Uh, uh, the the analysis of uh, people you um, are, are playing so of two hours ago 41,000 were playing the all-time peak 117,000 and you can see here that so in February of this year you know sort of 70,000 were playing January so this is over the the holiday series you had that really popular um, pyro update um, that's, so the peaks are still quite high in terms of players. And more of these players are becoming seasoned players. You are getting free to players in, but a lot of these are seasoned players. And you can see that the, the number of people over time is actually quite constant. Um, you've had, a, you've, you've had some, some, a bit of a, a drop off here, arguably. But having said that, I mean, it has gone down and come back up again. So the, 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 the peak players, see, I mean, it seems to be around forty or 50,000. So it's still, uh, it's still very impressive that people are still playing this game. And these are the people playing at one time. These are not the people that have a backpack. Or, you know, it may be that there may be so many million people, but at one time these are playing. So these are people that are potentially playing the game, then going and playing another game and coming back to this game and still having use for their equipment. This is a older site um, which uh, which I found. It, it, um, <coughs> it basically uh, talks about uh, 42 million Steam IDs out of the first 100 million bef the accounts before this date and it, it more or less uh, it was an early attempt to look at uh, uh, Steve. So it showed that a lot of the players, uh, there were free-to-play ones, premium TF users, and um, basically, uh, how much money do we have for trading? If you actually looked at the money at this time, um, there were about 190,000 keys available for trading. There were Bill's Hats, um, 124,000. Bud's, uh, a 64,000 and ref 781,000. 
So basically, um, the 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 economy was having about uh, 190,000 keys. So the the the. The things, the thing is, though, the spot value of the currency is around 1.6 million. That is at that time, and that is in 2012. Um, so, uh, how how many are rich enough to buy my cups? So basically, um, the the top one percent of ear, um, uh, earbud owners, you can see here that there is a there's a there is a very um, you know there's a very small proportion of people at the top in any case this is a an obsolete website there is a more up-to-date one this is the more up-to-date website which is very complex indeed this here looks at the number of items in the 104 million backpacks here bang lots of them okay if you actually look here they look at outpost stats um, they look at stats from uh, unusual.com, TF2 Trader, um, and they, they've, in essence, that um, uh, we're, we're looking at uh, a, a lot of backpacks and a lot of items. Um, the if you go down this list a bit, it actually looks at um, the the number of slots um, people have. The preview expanders. Um, it also looks at the ty uh, the types of the free to plays um, versus private. Obviously, the free to plays are a lot a lot more common. Um, it also looks at um, uh, the 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 counts of backpacks for the number of items. You've got this huge number of backpacks with hardly any items. And then you got these. Um, then you've got the peak with with a, with a matter of thousands, with many, many, many items. Um, unusuals. Even if you just look at the unusuals, um, how many unusuals on the market? Well, um, I'm not sure exactly what they 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 say, but I mean there are literally you know tens of thousands of unusuals on the market. And the average price is 50 keys, which is 100 bucks. So even if there were 50,000 on the market, that means, okay, there's 50,000. The average price is 50 keys. So 55, 50 is 2,500, which is 2.5 million. Okay, and then, um, then you have to take into account uh, other factors like some of these uh, uh, unusuals are much more expensive than 50 keys. So y you can see there is actually millions of dollars of unusuals, um, and then there's also other items which uh, are, are rare. But uh, the unusuals are a large, a large a slab of store of value. They're high, they're high v value things per unit, um, uh, whereas other items are less so. But you know things like Australians and and, and other strange weapons may actually um, ho uh, hold their value quite well. This actually talks about the ownership of uh, currencies and the different types and um, the ownership of keys. You know, most backpacks have got like one key value. Then you've got the the purple here, so the this little pink slither here, which is only like uh, um, was that one percent, where people have got more than sixty six keys. So it's a top one percent. Um, this talks about uh, the the, uh, the the different values and, and, and distributions of how many have them. So this there are some quite complex um, uh, TF2 statistics out there. Okay, the next thing is to to sort of point out to you is this analyst the, the uh, Kotaku um, uh, publishing by Owen Good in December of uh, uh, of. Uh, uh, the 18th 2011 this was a time when there was relatively little in the way of trade compared to what it is later because there was you know there's mu much less complexity in trading um, the uh, th this Paul made wearing looked at the numbers crunching and and placed the economy at about 50 million dollars that's that's not real money that valve has made the 
or this is what is going around and circulating in terms of um, you know what these things might be worth or if liquidated into cash and uh, can they all be liquidated at once I'm not sure now this is this is an estimate made in 2011 the they attempted to look um, at the hat economy and they they realized that um, that uh, that there's this continual um, injection of uh, refined metal into the virtual economy and there's this fostered growth. Now I actually have done a few of my own estimates and I believed at one stage that the amount of uh, input per year was increasing by an excess of 10%. So I think 10% is conservative. So if the economy value is worth $50 million dollars in 2011 with a conservative value of 10% so a 10% increase um, you know so you were going up by 10% per year and so what that that really means is the the economy is now worth way way over a hundred million dollars now is this realistic well I mean I, I think I think it's not unrealistic that this could occur so um, uh, I, I, I sort of put it out there. This is, uh, you know, you've got something which is generating a hundred million dollars of economy. Now we have to look at what that means: a circular flow of income. You, can, uh, like other economies, there are imports and exports into the economy. An import may be that there, there's money coming in because keys are being bought. Exports are less difficult because you can't really you know, sell these things somewhere else. So what happens is it tends to accumulate. So you develop almost like a, uh, a trade deficit. And so the economy, um, oh, so trade surplus or trade deficit, so there's, there's more things coming in and, and, and less going out. So it's like a, a, a trade deficit. So the funds actually accumulate. Um, and they are that they are and that's paid for by real cash um, which is taken through the steam shot or whatever by the the users of the game so basically we have this attrition and in the middle of that you've got import and export at one top you've got um, you've got, and then you've got buyers and sellers and that's that flow around in the circle between buyers and sellers and how much turnover which determines the economic activity or the gross domestic product of the TF2 economy. So this is a, another um, a, another uh, 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 website that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, which is Backpack TF. Backpack TF looks at um, at, at items. Uh, it sort of stratifies their values. And if you actually look here, um, this is the market trend, and this is how many of these items are being sold, okay? So if you look at the Steam market <coughs> recently, within 24 hours, I mean, look, there's a lot of items being sold, okay? Um, and the keys are worth a certain amount of refined metal, but if you actually look at just the keys alone, okay, there are a ma of six million inventories which don't include the private ones there is about a million items of keys available okay so there's a million items of keys so what that means is of those million keys you have a circulation now this is just in the steam market this excludes key traders okay this excludes other people so only in the community market where the items are, uh, are are being sold in 24 hours that's 1500 that's 1500 um, um, uh, uh, keys per day so that's if you so 1500 keys sold in the community market times 2.5 US dollars times 365 days in a year that is 1.368 million dollars uh, so 1.3 uh, uh, 368 million dollars which is 
about 1,400, well, so 1 1.4 million dollars. So even if you just looked at that figure, that's 1.4 million dollars of turnover per year in the just in keys, okay? That does not look at unusuals. That does not look at other items. $1.4 million just in keys on the community market. So I think conservatively looking at these and adding up multiple things, I think the value of the TF2 economy in terms of circulation is definitely still $50 million. There are more items around now. There are more people doing it. And arguably, even though people are not playing it at every moment and the peak number are down, there's still a lot of people with backpacks and there's still a lot of people trading. So I think the $50 million figure is still real in terms of turnover. Back then, there were less items to turn over. I think there is actually more turnover, and I think the average person now for trading is probably more uh, more likely to trade than than the, what they were in the past. And if you actually look over time, the, the number of free-to-play players, I mean, obviously, was initially really high, but there's more and more people that are wanting <coughs> to buy goodies and to to uh, fit their uh, fit their people out. Uh, fit their uh, loadouts out and uh, and do things uh, that other gamers are doing in the TF2 uh, community.